good to see you again. And like most of you have my mask. Who don't have a mask, I give you free after church. Say, I receive. Everything free. It's amazing how every hug in the pen want to run for rescue when Christmas comes. They call them ham. Every cow in the field want to buck you and kill you because you want to kill him. They call him beef. Every goat in the field want to cut the rope and run to the mountain because you call him mutton. And every chicken want to fly out of the coop because you call him curry chicken. It's amazing how everyone that walk the earth is a wicked, cruel, not honest in the sight of God. It's amazing how something died for someone to live. And if somebody or something don't die, you don't live. But every day of your life, you say you are a good person. You are a righteous person. You are a nice person. But you're eating good. You're still a murderer. Is it? You eat chicken. If a chicken don't die, how you eat the meat? So the Bible will write when the Bible said, no one good upon the earth. All of us are wicked. Talk to me now. I'm getting somewhere. Amazing how the cow calf, the calf crying that you take away the daddy because most of you want to eat the bull. If it's not a bull, I'm not going to eat it. Most of you want to smell the rummy and smell bad rummy. And if it don't smell, you don't partake because you don't want the may one. You want the rum good, isn't it? He urinates on himself to smell, and that's what you want. And even the skin that he urinates on. That's what you want to cook the soup. And you're telling me you're good? I'm afraid of you. But the mystery of God lies in motions. Lies in shadows. And the world will place itself in this demand. That someone had to die. For someone to live. It's simple like that. It's Christmas. Everyone at Christmas have a festive season. If you never eat a big plate of food, when Christmas comes, you don't worry. It prepares itself. Clap. Seeds, time, and harvest under the sun. How much of you from your barn you eating goat meat? Put up your hand. Almost all of you. From your know your sense at two years old, you're eating goat meat. You killing. At two years old. And you grow up. With that instinct. And when you drive past the jerk center. And smell the soup. You pull over. Because your instinct arrives. So you eat goat. Don't you believe. 
realized that the goat have feeling? Didn't you? Did you know that the hog have feeling? The fish have feeling? You didn't consider that? The children that you have, did you know that goat have children? They call them kitty. The fish have little bangers, you know that? And you take him away from the children? Did you, did you realize how cruel you was? But you do it not intention to hurt anyone. You do it because you want to feel good. Because everything upon the earth only reward you with a good feeling. The success of life that we receive upon this earth only a good feeling. You don't receive a house. You don't receive a car. You don't receive property. You don't receive wife. You don't receive husband. Only thing you get out of life is a good feeling. And wherever you go in life, the feeling don't leave you. It follow you unto death. Forever and ever. But the house that you pressure yourself and work hard to buy is not yours. It's the feeling of having a house is yours. You go to America, you can't care it. Are you with me? You go to Canada, you can't care the house. But the feeling that having a house is nice, isn't it? You have a nice husband. It's not yours. It's just the feeling that he gives you is yours. You go to heaven, you can't carry him with you. You go to America, if you even apply for his green card, he go up there. If you don't be careful, he change your feeling to bad feeling. So only time you access good feeling is when you keep it in motions because the reward of life is a good feeling. Clap. The key to open every doors is feeling. That key open prosperity doors Healing doors, miracle doors, blessing doors, increased doors. I go to the restaurant and look at Ochi and the, the, the waitress let me feel like a king. I give her a thousand dollar tip. The feeling motivates somebody to get promotion. I go there and she let me feel bad. Then I cannot promote her with a tip. I kiss my teeth after I eat and leave. The feeling that you give your boss causes your promotion over others. And people are saying, we're here for 13 years and didn't get promotion. But she just come one year and get promotion because she have the magic feeling. I see a husband run leave the wife because of Jezebel feeling. I see a wife run leave their husband because of the magic feeling. Woman, it's only a feeling cause life to continue. You could stay with this woman for 18 years, 20 years, 14 years, whatever years, it no matter. Once somebody overpower your feeling, that blessing gone, leave you because feeling keep motions in power. If you're with somebody today, ask them when I come, when I kiss you, when I touch you, how, I, how you feel. Find out if the feeling is good and bad. If it's not good, add little toothpaste, little Colgate, little something to it because feeling must feel feeling good. Life is about a magic touch that will cause an emotion feeling. 
Feel it make you climb the tree. Feel it make you jump walls. Feel it make you run like dog. Feel it make you run. Feel it make you give all of your money. Feel it make you give your car. Feel it make you give your house. Feel it make you put the man name on the title. Feeling will cause you in trouble. can't talk to a man to get what he have, woman. You can only let him feel that magic feeling and all the thing that he have gone. I want, I want to feel every day. I want to know what life is. I buy seven different type of mouthwash. When I kissed you this morning, I said, use the same mouthwash that you used yesterday. That one not taste good. Is it? Most of you, you go out with your spouse, all you buy is one winter fresh. Why don't buy 10 different bubble gum? See which one calls him to say, wow. But every day you taste like winter fresh. Is it? The feeling don't change. The feeling don't increase. The feeling don't go up. The feeling always stay at one place. Then you say, I want to experience something else. You with me, somebody? <laughs> you look in the house, you see one cologne. So you always have one smell. Tired of your smell in Kalalu. Why don't you smell like pop chow today? Next day you smell like curry chicken. Next day you smell like beef. Smell some different ways. Different color and different sensation of life. Change the atmosphere. Change it. It's feeling that causes life to continue. If that woman don't feel that feeling for that man, I promise you she never cook the dinner. Every time she see you, she upset. Every time she see you, she cross. Every time she see you, she want to run away because the feeling is not there. And the feeling will park you, her up for years and never move. She's unhappy because the feeling is not right. It's not about money, man. It's not about the food that you buy. It's not about the old dirty KFC. It's not about the burger or the pizza. It's a feeling. You're going with a big bucket of KFC. I, I prepare food for her. I give her money. It's not money. Who care about your dead man money with be a dead on it? Let you feel the peak that she want to climb the sky. She want to jump over the moon. She want to see Jesus high and lifted up. <laughs> Is the feeling of life open doors for you? This gentleman inspired me. I just would like to listen to him. And when most men know that, they talk to you in that level every day because they realize you love to listen to them. The feeling of life. You finish a thousand dollar crate and you can buy a thousand dollar more because just the talking feel good. Talk to me no more. There is two key that open doors quickly. Taste and feeling. The taste. The taste. Taste also join up with feelings. The same thing. A 
pretty woman, pretty like Jesus, fall in love with an ugly monkey. Why? Not the money, not the big house, not the car, the feeling. She refused to go to work. She go to work late. She take leave, absent leave, sick leave to find him. And that's why I tell all my sisters, and all my brothers, when you're talking to a woman and you hear her, she said, Omar, would not do that to me? Run, leave her. <laughs> You're feeling not catching up with Omar. So Omar started to come back up on her street. It's a sign that Omar feeling overpower yours. Either you step up your game or you step out. Sooner or later, she start call Kevin Omar. Because Omar feeling I come up on the computer. Every two or three words or a sentence she make, she mention Omar. She realized that Omar makes she jump the broom. Talk to me, somebody. <laughs> you don't cause her to jump the broom. When you come around, it's like mosquito biting her. It's like wasting in her. It's like a, a, a courage bite her. There's no sweetness to cause a feeling. Every man has been robbed by a woman at a young age. You know that? Because when you're younger, you're not experienced. And you make the first feeling. Your head spin like a bell ringing. <laughs> your money gone, your clothes gone, your shoes gone. Is it? When a good woman enters a man's life and get miserable, if you have a house, look out. She take the house, they take the car, and you never get it back. Just like how the feeling open doors, the feeling also open your healing. The excitement of life, the happiness of life will cause cancer cells to leave you. The sadness of life, the burden of life, spring more cancer cells in the body. Your cells only cooperate at peace level. Your cells only cooperate at excitement level. Your cells only cooperate when joy is in the house. Your cells start to discooperate when no joy, no peace, no happiness is among you. So everyone that don't let you feel good, immediately separate yourself from them. They're causing your cells to discooperate. Once your cells start to discooperate, you easily trigger off and get angry. Are you with me? <laughs> you easy trigger off and be at war. Because no, none of your cells is at peace to say no, let's leave it there. Everyone is at war at each other. But when uncle, auntie, niece, nephew, all of your family in the house cooperating, if one shot, one help the other. If the other go down, the next one pull up the other because everyone is cooperating in the house. <laughs> but when there is no cooperation, the house starts to get heavy. 
mama against daughter, daughter against father, father against niece, and your whole house is at war. Then sickness, pain, headache, and all different type of curse start to climb itself through. Be careful of a contention house. Because life is searching for a magnificent fuel. Woman, you know what I'm talking about. When a man reaches a certain place, you say, don't move from right there. I can't speak too much in that regard. But if you're a married woman, you know what I'm saying. And if you're not married and you're spooky, you still know what I'm saying. Me tell you never move from this though. You get vexed and miserable because the feeling start to leave. Come on, talk to me now, woman. <laughs> I tell you, don't move when you go back. Love your pastor. I'm teaching you. I'm teaching you. When you reach that level that it will happen in, Stop running up and down. Settle quietly and let it reach the peak of life. <laughs> it's not the food, my daughter. It's not the clean, you clean the floor. It's not the big old dumpling them that you put in a pot. It's not the clothes that you wash. It's not that. It's the feeling that causes his eyelash to quint and his eye broom broom gone over and his gray hair start to turn. That's the feeling. I believe my people need counseling, marriage counseling, and single counseling. After I finish training you today, your fiancé or your wife will never trade you for nothing else. Because I know you're going to add some curry goat or some chicken noodle or some something <laughs> to your life. Sometimes you need to do something spooky and say, look what you have. Come on, somebody. Look what you have. Have you ever tried that woman? Put up your hand if you ever tried it. You never put on something nice and say, look what you have. Try it tonight. Put some coconut oil on your lips. Shine it up. Take out the old Bump out of your face. Smooth down a little bit. Turn off the oil. Oil in bulb. And put in some bulb that put in colors. And prepare for just a one night. When he walked through the door, say, look what you have. She's talking to me. There's a song that I like. He said, this is how I like it. You know that song? Yes. This is how I like it. Until you find that place. You're not doing nothing. For 13 years, and I've never seen this part of you. Somebody is teaching you wisdom. He's a prophet. He's a prophet. I've never seen she jump so far until she started to go to prophet church. She entered the house with a different atmosphere. Is it? Different atmosphere. A lady 
did you have this gentleman? You're rough like a bull. I tell her after church, go uptown and buy a nipple buckle. Buy a Lasco at Horlicks and a Milo. Go home and mix. He's feeding. Don't cook no dinner for him. He's too rough. When he come home, she put on some nice movie. Told him to go and bed and have your dinner ready. He rushed in the bathroom, bed. Sit in the set around the table to have his meal. She said, this is not a table meal. Sit in the settee. She go in the fridge and take out the nipple buckle. Well, cool. She said, lean in my lap. He said, what is this? He said, lean in my lap. So she started to feed him. She said, what is this? He said, what is this? Where you come from with this? And she said, all I want you to do is just taste it. So he tastes it. Then he tastes again. Then he tastes again. He said, it tastes good. She said, I just want to feed you. Before she finished talk, the man sucked out every last out of the buckle. <laughs> Bring him back to a baby level. The next day he come home, she have his feed. And feed him again. So he, she called him the third day, asked what he want me to cook for dinner. He said he don't want the dinner. Prepare my feed. <laughs> if it tastes good and it feels good, I'll work with it. It's not the big dumpling or the big chicken in the plate. It's the feeling. You don't have to go in bed to give him a good feeling. It's all in circumstances. You find it. You find it. Sometimes you dance. Come on, somebody. You never dance before? Sometimes you mix little lask and mallow. Is it? Sometimes you run from down the road and run and chuck on him. Let him catch you. Make sure him back good. He will drop. Don't believe that is only the bed that have the feeling. They all circumstances. It's you to find it. I am so tired. And sick to see some man walk out of the house with him face rusty and the woman face smooth. And you know he's your husband. You know bossy bump him? You know get look at, look at some man squeeze him out? Make him smooth them? you full of butter and, and peanut butter on your face and everything. And he walk out just with a little soap. Wash his face. You know lay him down and Make him look like someone. I don't want to preach today. I want to counsel you. It's Christmas. I'm not no preaching. It's Christmas. Is it? Fix up yourself and fix up the person. Are you with me? Very important. Every man in here can tell you when a woman starts to bust bump and touch certain spot, my head spin. They can tell you, am I right, son? He's right. My eyelash start to go out. Just a certain cut. But some of you women, you hand tough because you use too much rusty bleach in your soup. Put some lotion in your hand, soft your hand lick you. I'm talking to you now. Look.
look at me, every one of you. There is no ugly feeling on the earth if you make it the right feeling. Young man. Young man. Every woman have two hands, two feet, have a head, two eyes, nose, everything. A woman spell the same way, although there are billions of them. Are you with me? All of them have the same thing. But you want browning with hips and all different type of thing. Let me tell you, man, you can't find 75,000 every Saturday for her to go shopping. You stay with the ugly one and fix her up, make sure you get pretty for the same thing where the next one have is the same thing this one have is for you to pretty it up. <laughs> it's for you to pretty it up. You put curry skeleton and thyme and the chicken and cook it and it don't reach the taste and the feeling that you want. Don't curry tomorrow. Put browning and brown stew or sweet and sour or something. And if it not taste to the level, do a next deep fry. Do, do something else until it reach the peak that you want it. You're back with me now. Every woman is a flavor. Is you to fix up your flavor right so she tastes at the peak. If, if I don't like to taste the flavor of Colgate in my wife's mouth, I give her a bubble gum. No, I'm not tasting Colgate no more. I'm tasting bubble gum, isn't it? Different levels. Then maybe I add something else. I give her some honey in her mouth. So I'm tasting honey. So everything you add to life, it gives you a different taste. It's the same person, same life. Are you with me? You could be amazed to know. <laughs> amazed to know. The same chicken that tastes bad yesterday. Today you cook it different and you lick your finger. Trust me. Trust me, man. Don't condemn anyone. Don't condemn anyone. Fix up what you have. Make it reach at the level that you require. Look at this. I spray myself to a powerful level of cologne. The sensation is right. But I walk and stand beside a dead dog. The cologne that I have on don't make sense. Why? The dead dog overpower the sensation. Now my feeling is manipulated. You have a good husband, a good girlfriend, a good fiancé, but you're into a family house. It's like a dead dog in your atmosphere. Mixed spirits around you. Love cannot take its course. So every time you see the man, you're angry with him. He's angry with you because love is very selfish. Love only wants you by itself. Not others around you. Just move from that atmosphere and go to somewhere by yourself and see if love no appear in a sweeter mood.
from 45 going up to 60, 70 is hapuzo. But between 17 to 35 is a go getter zone. You don't are happy until you have it all good. You don't get the house yet. You don't get the car yet. You don't marry yet. But you lie down like dead cow. What happened to you? What happened to you? I will die for you. I will just take me. You're... I can't live without you. And you're just 22 years old. So he drive his old Bedford truck in your heart and mash up your heart and left you at 25. Now you have to start all over. You don't have a house, you don't have a car, you don't have an old mash up phone you have, and you still have to run back to mama. A pretty woman become crack. I want to move out and I want to live with him. Live with him? Do he have a house for himself? Do he have an investment? Do he go into university? Do his life look like he's going somewhere in society? But you want to live with him? Look at me, my, my child. You are a successful woman and you want a target, an example, a target that you're looking for is a fly. So a fly is your target, right? Then you find a man who is a fish. Come on, the man. So once you have this fish man, the fly is going to come. Am I right? Oh, you get it now. You get it now. Your target that you want is bees. Find a honey man. Once you have a man which is honey, the bee is going to come. Your target is to live into a big house. You find a broke pocket man. You know what's going to come? A bicycle. Now you start to complain that life is rough and life is tough and you not go on and government put. Is government not put to in nothing? Is you choose what you want to attract what you don't want. You don't have a house as a woman or a man. You don't have a car. You don't have a piece of land. Find someone, if they don't even have it, they're in the position to achieve it. <laughs> A friend of mine is 57 years old and don't have a house. And his wife leaving. He gave me a request that prophet pray for me get a for me to get a nice wife. I said, at your age, it's tough. Let's see what I can do. He don't have a house, but he have a little car. I said, before you look at wife, you need a house, son. He said, prophet, the bank will never give me a loan to buy a house or a piece of land because of my age. I said, I know that. I say, I'm going to give you a house. I'm going to give you a house. Two days pass, three days pass, four days he come. I say, Prophet, you don't, you don't find the house yet? I say, yes, I find the house. The house will call you later. He said, I was cannot call. You I said, don't worry about that. The house will call you. So I find a, a 23 years old girl in the church. I said, call this man. He's a husband. He has something 
that you want to achieve in life and you have something that he wants to achieve. And she called, they talk, meet up, they have fish and bami and they talk. And said, Prophet, she's young. I said, that's your house. That's your house. You cannot get a loan to buy a house. So I give you one. She's not working. I said, who tell you she's not working? You are the supervisor into a big company. What do you mean she's not working? You employ her. And use her after three months to apply for the house. Are you not get it yet? You'd not qualify for the house, but the woman that you're with is qualified if she employ in a good opportunity. So he employ her in the company at a level that her pay can qualify for a $15 million house. Wisdom is important. <laughs> but if some of you, you will take up anyone once they look good. Is not look good aware. Is the better life aware. So they wait for four months for a pay qualify. Now they apply for the house. Engage her to be married. Wisdom is important. Get wisdom. Get person that have where you're going. is not about the beauty or the look good. It's about the happiness at the end of where you're going. It's about the success. It's about get it right. So you work hard. Some, some person in America, Canada have two jobs, three jobs. They, they don't happy, but they work towards it. When they reach 60 years old, 55 years old, they start to relax because a happy season starts to chip in. Until you see the house or the car or a successful life, you don't go shopping $30,000 for your chalice. A part of that money could save for investment. But some of you just want to show off in young age. And when you're old, you broke down. You've gone back to sleep and slippers. And then you start saying, my daughter not taking care of me and my son gone left me. You should know that mother have, father have, Blessed is a child that have his own. Wisdom is important. Everyone wants to roof over the head. Am I right? So why you go to a restaurant buying a fish for 7,000? What do you want to do? Show off? And your house is not there yet. I will eat thin macaroni and white rice until I buy the first 50 block. <laughs> but no. You want to show off. The lady tell me that her, her, her room set, that her fancy is pulling together to buy is 800000 for the room set. And she live in a rent house. If I see the bed head past her, so I call her. I say, you have a jinx, mommy, Oliver? Jinx, son. Put a little wisdom in your head.
I said, every week and every week, at least two or three times for the week, you bring him at this too. And he came continue to pay down. And that $830,000 plus tax bed set that you want. Because this is what you want, you get it. After you finish pay for it, you cancel the contract. And tell them to give you a check and you go to JMB and open an investment and you put that 830,000 in the investment scheme. <laughs> Until I get the piece of land, I don't want no bed. I will sleep on the floor. One hundred percent of God people only work money to put in other people's pocket. And your pocket after a while become empty. Stop it. Stop it. If if Mr. Chin happy, you should have it. Only Go the ultimate at the very important thing in your life. I repeat. Only go at the ultimate at the very important thing in your life. Are you with me, somebody? I see parents borrow $1.8 million to send the child to university after they go through all the process and whole student loan and all the rest and put themselves in debt. The child come out with a piece of paper mark degree. Or they call it master degree. Just a piece of paper to burst your brain. And now she's employed into an organization that the director, the CEO, don't have a master degree. The owner for the company cannot read. But your daughter, who have more intelligence, have to work under organization that don't qualify her position. And before the daughter have wisdom to walk in it, friend the director, friend the manager, friend the CEO, and find the secret what caused the company to be so success successful so you can, after one year, open a company like that. You sit down, but I, I want my pension for 35 years. You're a crook. Thirteen subjects, degree, diploma, and PhD. And you're working in a company that you want ice cream when Christmas comes. The manager will pack a box of bun and cheese and say, this is for my employee. And you walk home with your ring tail. Oh, he give me bun and cheese, a nice manager. He's slaving you. You are a crop. Christmas come. He give you a little gift again and ring his tail. And you go home. The big degree on the wall. And you make him make $3.8 billion for the year. And you go home with a gift of $3,000. And see, you put up a gift on your dresser. I'm a boss, give me. You cook your head. Where you come from? Your job is to search for the secrets. What caused this company to be so successful? 
you have the brain for it because it's you running the company. You know all the tactics. No, you need the secrets to open one just like that. Why you think you have so much bakery? It used to be one bakery in Jamaica. But persons start to gain the secrets and start to move after one year, two years, three years and open their own bakery. Are you with me, somebody? One woman, when she make pizza, Domino Pizza sell pizza for the whole year. And they said, they promote her to be manager now in the pizza company. And you cannot find a little money to open a little shop, Mark Sweet Steak Pizza. You want to stay in the company that they can, after a year, they can put up a, 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 a review or a preclaude saying that, oh, we make 18.6 million losses because of you, isn't it? And you tell me, you can't, because you have the secret already, you can't shift and open a little shop and put it together as a sweet, tasty pizza in Jamaica. No, you want to work and a slave. I am the manager for the pizza, the Domino pizza. My store get the, the reward of being great, they say. And you are not the owner. You is a goat. Until the end of the day, everything come to you. You're not successful. Talk to me, no more people in there. <laughs> Until the end of the day, everything come to you. You're not successful. Don't make no one give you no gift or no reward and no bun and cheese when Easter comes to prop you. They're scamming, they're scamming you. I can't wait for Easter come because when my manager gave me a big barn. That's why someone block it in your face. A bunny you get. <laughs> you see them, they don't, even, they, they don't even want to put it in box or put it in box because they want people to see the, the, the company give them. They walk out stush. But my boss give it to me. 75 bun with piece of cheese. I don't, I don't have to buy, uh, Sh Shelly, I don't have to buy a bun this year. No, my boss give me one big bun. Yeah. And you take the picture of it and you send it on the WhatsApp. If you see how my boss treat me, and he make 27 billion now. And all you make is a bun that costs $700. And piece of cheese that costs three hundred dollars. <laughs> Today, step out in wisdom. Step out in understanding. You're in the twenties or the thirties. You must in the fast lane. You must go for it. It's not happy season yet. It's a go-getter season. Go for it. How can a woman at 25 years old in a hammock reading book giving the Lord thanks for what you have done? You don't have a house. Do you have a car? <laughs> Great assets. But you're paying 
$350,000 for two days in a half a moon hotel in a hammock. Two days. And the little food them give you don't value a thousand dollars. Two days. You can see, he bring me to Pegasus. 280,000 for the weekend. And you don't own a bicycle. Two days. And the money that could buy your car gone in the next month pocket. Give me the two hundred and eighty thousand dollars. I'll buy some roast bread fruit and ackee and salfish and I put a pan with some water and put your foot night and scrub it and sing a song for you. I will save the two hundred and eighty thousand. Are you with me, somebody? <laughs> Don't be happy. Some of you go to America and you go up there and you're complaining that you're not happy. It's not about happiness right now. It's about going for it. It's about getting it. Go for it, my child. Climb the mountain. Run through the valley. Cross the water. Climb the grill. Go for it. Bring it home. Bring the house home. Bring the car home. Bring it home. Then you can say, oh, it's all done. Now we can have a joyful season. Bring it home. You don't marry to the man. You don't even have a child with him to tie up his foot. But you are about a my man. You're crazy. You're crazy. Anytime you find a good man, and you know he is good and his future is going to be bright. You tie him with a rope. You give him a handcuff on his, on his hand. You, 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 you put so much upon him that if he escape one way, he tie up the other way. You ever hear a man say, that? I would have left her a long time ago, but I told my daughter. The daughter tie him. And that means if you go to no dog place, what time now? No. I'm telling you things because some of you are spooky. But don't let goodness run from you. Are you with me? When you find greatness and goodness, tighten it up. You find a good woman, tighten it up. And a good woman is not the one that cook, wash, clean, and iron. That's not the good woman. A slave that. That's a slave. And you woman, you make a man slave in your, and you, you wash your old dirty jeans them. And your old stinky sneakers them. Make him wash him own sneakers. None of you is not the head of your house because the two of you have head. You wash him rings. You peel the yam, he pull in the pot. It's 50-50. None of us is the head. You know who controls the house? The little baby, the little daughter, the little son. It's them is the head of the house. You don't believe me? Watch this. A child at eight Months old refused to sleep in the crib because the child wants to be with mama. That husband will never enjoy tonight. That child refused to sleep until she or he wants to sleep, and you can't sleep neither. Who run the house? A husband come home tired and, and wanted to feel God in town. He, so he said, honey, come in the bed. The child go in between the husband and the wife to make sure not touch nothing. 
And if the husband even spoke it to put his hand over the child, wake up and say, what do you do? Who run the house? That child decide if you watch cartoon or you watch news. Mama, I want to watch cartoons. And no, Daddy want to watch the news. <laughs> Warning her. If you slap her, she cry more. She decide what show you watch. So who run the house? If you have a child like that, get a helper. And get a far downstairs room. And put him down there. Because you will never enjoy your wife again. In that sight of that child. Very important. That you use wisdom. As I close. I know all of you want to eat healthy. You want to be strong. You want to enjoy life as life goes on. But if you have a mighty target ahead of you, you must enjoy life very carefully. Are you with me? Don't overspend when you don't have it. Because the target is not waiting. Time wait and no man. You must have the house at 35 years old. You must have the van at 35 years old. You must have the target at the end of the year. No matter what it takes, it must be there. You with me? Most of us come out of the tradition house. We don't eat pork. We don't join cash pot line. We don't join lotto line. Is it? True. Like myself. All of us have our pride and our ambition and we don't want no one to look down on us. Oh no, am I right? Come on, nobody. Come on, no man. A prophet to talk to you, no man. Look at me, everyone. A prophet to talk to you. Me not have nobody to fire me so I can talk. Come on, no man. I joined the lotto line and win $250 million. Who cares who want to chat? Broke pocket, rotten teeth, sharp pants, boy, chat. I'm walking with my money. I can buy a house cash. I can buy a Range Rover cash. I can do everything cash. You cannot talk down my riches. I'm just using an example. You let people tell you no good this so don't do that while well, them are go around the corner and do the same thing. A pastor that I used to go to at his church in Spanish town. The second pastor used to preach that you're not supposed to fornicate and if your wife don't die, you're not supposed to. To marry again or to get the next person. It is wrong. It is adultery, fornication, whatever it is. He married to his, this young, young wife. She go to America, find someone else, and decide that she's going to move on. You know, when they preach, it is God said. When a next man take away his wife at 27 years old, his preaching change. <laughs> the local croft 
see a next woman in that church when love. Same preaching change. Yes, God will forgive you, and if your wife is gone, then God will have mercy. That's why Jesus come at me. But last year you was preaching that if your wife not dead, you came married. But now your wife gone, you want somebody else. Now your preaching changed so quick. You see some hips in the church you like. People will talk to you and counsel you according to their life. But when their life shifts to your life, they change. They're talking. <laughs> Look at this. The wages of sin is death. That means if you are dunce and you don't understand what wages mean, the reward of sin is death. And if you're dunce and you don't understand what reward means, the penalty of sin is death. If you don't understand what sin means, wrongdoing gives you death. That means if you're there with a woman for two years, three years, five years, and God never kill you, that means I know sin because the wages of sin is death. If the wages of sin is death, and you chop a man and he die, and they said if you kill somebody, it is sin, and you not die and God not kill you within the hour or the minute or the same year, then the wages of sin is not death. Because the wages of sin lead to death. Anything you do doing now and God not kill you, that means it wasn't sin. Because the wages of sin is death. Very important that you know God love from man love. That woman that you fall in love with five years now, and you're not married to her, and you have two kids with her, and you're not dead yet, that means I never sin. Because if I did sin, God would have killed you. I get hundreds of invitations to preach in other church, and I cannot train myself to preach in other people's church because my teaching is a mystery. They will kick me out. And if they kick me out in 24 hours, I burn down that church. The police stop me in Marcus Garvey Drive. I'm coming from airport, jiving like mad. You say, you give me documents and your license. I'm looking for my license, couldn't find it in the bag. I said, sir, I don't have my license, but this is my document. He said, you must jive with a license. I can lock you up. You can do, you tell me all the things that you can do. Lock me up, do this, do that. I said, sir. Sir. I take out my my cards, I say, I am a prophet of God, sir. You are a lawman, a police officer. You can lock me up, you can send us to prison, you can send us to jail, you can sentence us, you can do all different type of things in your power because you're a lawman, and I respect that. But, sir, I am a spiritual man. I can dream you, I can box you in a dream, I can make you don't wake back up, I can cripple you, I can blind you, I can make you can't eat, I can make you vomit for your life. He said, You go on. Totally different. You do natural stuff. I do spiritual stuff. If you cannot overpower what I do, leave me alone. Before I finish, he says, sir, please drive. <laughs> Very important. Don't fight against an anointing you don't know. Very important. Don't speak bad on anyone you don't know. Clap. <laughs> As I close in one minute, one minute,
don't let what they give you cause your conscience to bother you. Don't do that. Because what they give you is not the real thing. Trust me. If the Ten Commandments was of God, all of you were dead already. Because all of you break it. And if God said, if you commit fornication, you will die. You cannot pray to stop God's death on your life. Because God is not a man to change his mind. And God is not a man that have a heart to change. If God said you're going to get rich by 35 years old, no matter what you go through, at 35, you will be rich. No matter who work on you, no matter who try to kill you, no matter who try to hurt you, at 35, God's words will come to pass. <laughs> Most Christians, matter of fact, 100% of Christians believe that God forgive. If God forgive, then man would be powerful than God. You know why? Because if you commit something wrong and God say you should die and then him change the mind and say, may I forgive you, go live. Then man would be more powerful than God. God don't forgive. If you come against what God says, you die. That's God. God is a just God. Not a merciful God. A just God. Get it from the prophet. Man forgive, woman forgive, but God is just. God said, fish, once you stay in the water, you don't have to work. I will provide you food. I will give you everything you want. Fish, if you come out of the water, then I'll kill you. So what God said to the fish. There is no forgiveness in the presence of God. Once you come against what I say, you die. The fish grudge us because we drive in BMW, X5, Range Rover. The fish come out of the water, come in the church. What going to happen to him? He started to take sick because the wages of sin is death. And once you come against God, you die. So the pastor prayed for the fish. What's going to happen to him? Still going to die. We intercede, we pray, we holler, we sing. What's going to happen to him? Because the wages of sin is death. It's simple. So there's no forgiveness in the presence of God. Once you come against God's word, you die. So that part of the Bible is true. The wages of sin is death. The problem is, what is sin? That's it. Anytime you come against what God speaks of, don't pray for forgiveness. You're going to pay the penalty. You die. That's it. So I close in half, half a minute. I'm coming down. I'm coming down. Don't get weary on me. All the things that they say you must pray for forgiveness for is a scam. It's a lie. All of them. Not even one of them is true. All of them that you confessing you're a sin and you're born in sin and shaping iniquity, all of it is scamming, is lying. Because God never said that. Trust me. All of the things that you feel you're guilty of, you're not guilty of nothing. Nothing. All of the things that they said you must go in the pool, you must baptize in the water, the pastor must baptize you, the pastor must plead the blood juice over you and bring you so you can make heaven, all that is coming. Because if you have to go through a pastor to reach heaven, then God is not real. God alone you got you to reach there. You don't need a man to reach paradise. 
God will bring a Jew himself. And the truth of the fact, you're not going to paradise. You are in paradise. I do a deliverance yesterday. Remember I always speak about the meek control the earth. After I started to deliver the little girl, you yeah, know what the little girl started to speak, the demon started to speak. She said, I want to kill her, but her dead auntie, a cover. Watch the video and you, know, you see it. The spirit wants to kill her, but her dead auntie is so powerful, her dead auntie uh, cover her that they don't kill her. The meek is covering for you. As we close, run the race without frustration. Run the race without guiltiness. Run the race without apology. If you have to go in the latter line to be that millionaire, don't let no one come down on you. Because when it's all over and you have the big house, if the cynic bites you, although you have it, you don't care. If the goat bucks you, although you get it, you don't care. If a dog bites you, once you get it, you don't care. Once I reach home, I don't care what happened. But some of you, you don't want mosquito to bite you. You don't want to scratch on your knee. You don't want no one to say, oh, she was in the latter line. You don't want no one to speak down on you. Let me tell you something, woman. If you do good, they're going to talk bad. And if you do bad, they're going to talk bad. So do your thing. Do your thing. I see bishops suffering. Can't buy a car. Can't live in a house. Because... He's so righteous and so just. When I finished talk to him, he changed from his righteousness. For he realized that doing good don't attract greatness. Doing good cause people to attract badness to you. You know what work? Is doing what working. This little fool, fool man in my church, uptown selling Sister Scully CD. You ever hear about Sister Scully? She's a great woman. She died now, but she's a great woman. I used to go to church with her. She used to go. She's a Scully CD and some other Christian CD uptown. He come down, asked me to lend him $500 to pay his fare to go home. I said, what happened to you? You don't sell nothing? He said, from morning, you don't sell nothing. All day, walking up and down your town. I said, go in my office. In my office, give me water. He said, Drink some water. I said, You never hear about Gullyback? Yeah. I said, Get some Gullyback CD. Get Ninja Man. Get Cartel. Mix it with the Christian CD and go back up town. Tomorrow morning by 11 o'clock, he started to sell off the CD. And the Christian CD is still standing. Never sell one. The good don't work. You live by what? Working. You know why your husband don't stay home? Because the old slip that you're wearing don't work. It's upon the river work. That's why he's outside. You're not talking to me. You're not talking to me. You're not talking to me. The slip not working. He done the goalie working. That's why he's out there. He's on the bank working. I close now. 